In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We are continuing with our series on Godly Wisdom from James 3.17, talking about the different attributes of Godly Wisdom, so that as we grow in Godly Wisdom, hopefully we will display those things, and as we intentionally pursue to work on being those things, that means we are growing in Godly Wisdom. And today we have stopped at the station of that Godly Wisdom is full of good fruits. Now, if you notice, it says it's full of mercy and good fruits, but what it's saying is that full of mercy and full of good fruits. And this is the first thing. We need to beware not to be um, at ease if I bear a piece of good fruit every once in a while. That's not enough. A person who is godly wisdom needs to be full of good fruits. And a pers as a person grows in godly wisdom, if they are doing things right, not a day will pass by without them producing some good fruit on that given day. Um, if an, a day passes by with me not doing any good fruit or bearing any good fruit, that means I haven't grown enough in godly wisdom yet. So first of all, let's talk about good fruit. I looked up the words good fruit, and fruit is easy. That's karpos. You know, as we say in the, in the Coptic New Year, nemni siti, nemni mumi, nemni... Carpus, like from which you get the word, I think, carbs or, or uh, 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 carbohydrates. But the word that was interesting to me is good because it's a very general and it could mean any kind of a thing. And I found that it's, it, it's in Greek, it's agathos. And it's kind of like, have you ever heard about abuna agathon or amba agathon? That's what good is. And look at what all of good means in the word full of good fruit. Okay, this is, this is what that good, that one word means. It means useful, beneficial, constructive, excellent, distinguished, upright, and honorable. I need to be bearing fruit that does those things. Now, when you look at fruit in general, one can bear agathos fruit, good fruit. One can be fruitless. They can be bearing no fruit. And one can be bearing bad fruit. The word for that word bad is kakos. Uh, in Greek, which means pretty much the opposite of good. Useless, base, unworthy, destructive, weak, and harmful. Some people are bearing good fruit. Some people are bearing good fruit every once in a while. Some people aren't bearing any fruit. And some people are bearing bad fruit, which is a very dangerous place to be. I wanted to talk about fruit a little bit because really Christianity is all about fruit. Eternity is all about fruit. Faith is all about fruit. And I'll show you how. We're going to mention three verses from uh, James, James 2. First one is James 2, 14. St. James tells us, or the Holy Spirit tells us on the mouth of St. James, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? You can replace that with fruit. It does not be fruit. Can that faith save him? And what is the answer? Our faith is 100% holy. No. Okay. Look, he continues, verse 20 in James 2. But are you willing to acknowledge, you foolish person, that faith without fruit is useless? He said, we can do all the faith that we think is right, but if, there's, if that's not translated into fruit, it's useless. The last one, which is, we're really familiar with, James 2.26, faith without fruit is dead. Show me your faith without your fruit, and I will show you my faith by my works, or by my fruit. I love that quote that His Holiness Pope Shenouda used to say is that, we don't go to heaven by our works, but we cannot go to heaven without our works, okay? Um, we go to heaven because of faith and really because of God's grace, because we don't deserve to go to heaven. But without fruit, we're not going to make it in there. If you want to gauge how you are doing as a Christian, this is actually very doable, very easy. Just get together with your father's confession and do a survey. How are you doing as far as your daily life being full of good fruit not just my good deed of the day and i checked it full of good fruit now if you've noticed during this series not intentionally but we've quoted matthew 25 a lot okay talking about godly wisdom and matthew 25 our lord said this to his disciples just a couple days before his crucifixion right before his crucifixion um and, and again, before leaving, he's going to tell them like the most important thing. And it's Matthew 25, and it's broken into three thirds or three sections. The first part of Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13, talks about the wise and the foolish virgins. And, you know, talking about all ten virgins brought their lamps. 
all ten virgins um, came. All the, the ten virgins showed up. All ten virgins uh, stayed up late as much as they could. All ten virgins fell asleep. All ten virgins rose up when they, when they heard the bridegroom is here. Okay, all of them. But one thing separated them is that one, one set of them had extra oil and the other ones didn't. And the church fathers teach us that this oil is good fruit. That's what the, the, that oil is. But some people wonder, like, what is this oil? What does it represent? Teach, the church teaches us, it's talking about good fruit. And that's why when they said, give us some of your oil, they said, we can't. It's, it's not going to be enough for both of you. You will never go to heaven because you're associated with somebody who's super close to you, your spouse, your kids, your parents, your, your bishop, because they are bearing good fruit. That won't help you diddly, okay? You have to have your own. And when they said, go to those who sell, who are those who sell? The recipients of the good fruit, the poor, the needy. I love today's psalm uh, in Matins that said, Blessed is he who is mindful of the poor and the needy. The Lord will deliver him in an evil day. That's, yeah, I mean, the timing of God is, I think, is, is so amazing. So that's the first third of Matthew 25. The second third of Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30, is the parable of the talents. This is the master who had uh, the three servants and he gave one five talents and five, one two talents and one one talent. And his whole goal was, he said, I'm going to go away. I'm going to go back to my father's house and prepare mansion for you. And while I'm gone, I want you to make profit for me. What is profit for God? Winning more souls. How do we win more souls? Good fruit. That's what he wants them to do. And he gave each one according to their capacity. Even the guy with the, with the one who ended up not bearing good fruit and he just buried it. God gave him enough talents to bear good fruit. I think it's funny that what the world calls talents today, it's, it's the same word as the talents in the Bible. Um, you know, like somebody's talented in singing, somebody's talented in math problems, somebody's talented in administration or whatever. And it's from the same word talent. Some people call it gifts because it is a gift from God. But the talent that is given is for me to trade in and win profit and bear good fruit for my master. The, 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 the gift that he gave me is to bear fruit for my master, good fruit. The third third of Matthew 25, I referred to this one many times, it's 31 to 46, that's the whole chapter, is the, the, the sheep and the goats, putting the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And when he told them, come into the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world, and he, they told them, like, how come, Lord? He told them what? Because you bore good fruit. You fed the hungry, you clothed the naked, you visited the sick and those in prison and so on, and took in the strangers. It's all about fruit. Um, let's talk about fruit versus leaves a little bit. We'll do some agricultural stuff today. Now, as we know, um, leaves are very important for any plant, for any tree. And without the leaves, there's not going to be any fruit coming out. And what are leaves? Now, we're talking about good fruit, the spiritual fruit here that are profitable for our Lord. What are what would be the leaves in our life? They're simply the stuff that you hear all the time since you were a kid in Sunday school. Prayers, by reading the Bible, fasting, liturgies, Bible studies, sermons, spiritual meetings, spiritual readings, journaling, quiet time. All of these things are the leaves. All of these things are the things that are going to produce the nourishment to bear the good fruit. Now, what are the good fruit? I mean, that's the sky's the limit. That's obvious. What everybody says right away is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So if, if, if I spread the love, I am bearing the good fruit of love. If I spread joy, if I'm a peacemaker, if I'm patient with those who demand uh, uh, my patience, um, that's bearing the fruit of patience. But it's a lot more because I don't want you to just think of those. These are like nine general categories. But there's also sacrifice is good fruit. Forgiveness is good fruit. I mean, like... Imagine you're in, I don't know, the biggest fruit market in the world that has like every fruit of the world, right? Hundreds of fruits. Take your pick, okay? You don't have to bear all of them, but you have to be bearing some good fruit all the time, okay? You can't be bearing like bananas all your life, you know? Like you don't have to do all of the individual fruits. Some, it's not your talent. For some of us, it's not. But we need to aspire to be always bearing some of the good fruit. Sacrifice, forgiveness, service, giving, hospitality. We talked about that one last Sunday. Help, comfort, encouragement, mercy, evangelism, teaching, grace, forbearance. Like, 
a smile is good fruit. Just saying hello to somebody is good fruit. It's so easy to bear good fruit. I just need to be mindful of it to do it. I need to go on. So good fruit is the goal rather than leaves. This is something we need to be fully aware of. Good fruit is the goal rather than leaves. But just like a tree cannot bear fruit without the leaves, one will not be able to bear good fruit without the spiritual leaves that we talked about. Okay. Um, now you're going to say, well, what about people who are, you know, non-Christian or whatever, or atheists can bear good fruit? I say yes, but they will not be able to do it consistently, okay? They will not be able to do it to those who don't deserve it, who are cruel and mean and harsh to them and want to kill them and destroy them, but a Christian can because it's not our power. It's, it's, he's the, he's the vine, he's the root and the vine and we are the branches. That's why we are able to summon that juice from him and be able to get good fruit in a sustainable fashion and with those who deserve the opposite, much less um, deserve the fruit. And that's why our Lord on um, Holy Monday cursed the fig tree because it was a perfect symbol of the Pharisees, okay? They had tons of leaves. That tree was full of leaves. And if you know fig trees, if there's leaves, there should be fruit. And so they, they do it right, the tithing, praying, uh, uh, fasting, you know, all the, even the way you dress, the way you look when you go to the temple. I mean, they had everything. They had, they had the Old Testament, like for goodness sake, almost memorized. I think to be a Pharisee, you had to memorize Leviticus and Psalms alone. So, so they had tons of leaves, but was there fruit? <laughs> no, some of them there was no fruit and some of them there was bad fruit. He said, you don't go in and you make it hard for for people to enter. Okay. What gets in the way of bearing fruit? There's a lot of stuff. I mean, if, if as a Christian, it's obvious that without fruit, we're in big, big trouble, eternal trouble. So it would behoove us to know what gets in the way of bearing good fruit and what hinders me from bearing good fruit. I'll just mention a few points. The first and foremost is being selfish. And boy, selfishness, yani increasing like like wildfire in the world today and i'm guilty of this myself being not being other minded look good fruit has to do either with god or with neighbor yani there's no good fruit like that i bear with me i think that would be the leaves part okay so if i'm not mindful of god or people there's no way i'm going to be bearing good fruit god always um Good fruit always has to do with God and with neighbors. So naturally, if I'm consumed myself, I'm not going to be mindful of others and I will not bear good fruit. The second thing is being passive instead of proactive, instead of being intentional or purpose-driven. I mean, some people say, nobody asked me. Nobody said anything. If they just said it, I will be happy to do it. But a lot of people don't ask. Either they're ashamed or they don't want to be a burden or... They just won't ask or they're going to think like everybody has their own problems and everybody has their own thing. I love one of the many things I love about Tobit in the book of Tobit is that he was a very fruitful tree, a very fruitful plant for God. The man would not let a day, as the Bible tells us, he'd go out and encourage people. He'd go out and tell the brethren, remind them of God's promise. He would go out and invite the poor to come and eat with him. He would go out and bury the dead people. Did the dead, dead people ask him to bury them? No, he would just go out and do it. Go out and do it. Being proactive. Don't wait on being asked. Okay? Keep doing it and, and let this be a part of, of your nature. Number three, intentionally wanting to bear bad fruit. I don't think any of us here have to worry about this, but there are people out there who are trying to bear bad fruit base, unworthy, useless, destructive, harmful. Just a few days ago, I'm sure some of you read about it or heard about it, in a Christian university here in America, there was a protest by about 150 or 175 students and staff who were protesting big time. Why? Because they wanted to keep Chick-fil-A from opening on their campus. Why? Because it supports and makes donations to Christian hate organizations. There are people who are spreading bad fruit. Christophobia is becoming the new fad now. I hate how, pay attention, when you watch TVs or movies, 90% the person who is really religious or, or, or faithful, whatever, is usually 
a judgmental person or an evil conniving person that nobody knows. And typically 90% of the time, or maybe more, clergy are portrayed as scoundrels. Pay attention. There are those who are intentionally sowing bad fruit because they want to destroy Christianity because they are the children of their father, the devil. As our Lord told them, you, you are the, the children of the devil. Number four, not enough spiritual nourishment. Like we said, if there's no leaves, there's not going to be any fruit. So also, um, I think this is the fifth point here, which is a really b big reason, especially for us here in the Coptic Orthodox Church, that people, things that get in the way of being fruit is that a lot of us have a wrong understanding that spiritual rituals or practices, all the things that I've mentioned, prayer, reading the Bible and fasting and, and all that stuff, that this is our goal. This is not our goal. And if you make this your goal, it's like, you actually see some people go like, you know, okay, I don't like, I don't feel it anymore. It's like, okay, I keep doing the same thing. I feel like, what am I doing? Like, okay, been there, done that. But if we begin to understand that this is not our goal, this is a means to our goal, these are the leaves so that I would bear good fruit, now I'm doing it with purpose. I'm doing it with intention. I'm reading and praying and seeking juice from God and like looking in the Bible to find out how can I be a good fruit bearer on a continuous uh, basis. So these are the things that, that get into bearing good fruit. There's a lot of other reasons. The parable of the sower is a great one. Our Lord told us very clearly, pride and arrogance gets in the way of bearing good fruit, which goes with selfishness, the first point. You know, that's the wayside. It didn't bear any, okay? And then the rocky soil and the thorny soil, they weren't able to bear fruit because they're either superficial, there's no depth, they just do it 100 miles an hour, they don't soak in. Just last night I was talking with somebody about how after we read the Bible or after we read a good spiritual book, sit in silence for just 60 seconds. Just sit there and say, don't go to answering emails, don't go to reading the next thing, go to, to, to having coffee, just sit there for 60 seconds and just let it soak in so it doesn't dribble out of the other ear. And the cares and the, and the worries of the world, they, they steal the fruit bearing thing. The last thing I'm going to talk about and then we'll close is the power of bearing good fruit, which is really awesome and very motivating, okay? We're gonna do some spiritual agriculture here. If you think of any fruit, every fruit has, like it carries a seed in it. Or in some cases, many, many seeds, which I love. And what do seeds do? Seeds grow up to become a tree. And what do trees do? Trees carry more fruit, which carry more and more seeds. And so those seeds make more fruit and more trees and more fruit and stuff like that. So really, you have no idea the power and the perpetuity, is that the right term, of some good fruit that you bear. And like we said, the fruit could be love, it could be peace, it could be patience, it could be all kinds of stuff. One of the things I noticed when I came here to Austin about eight years ago is that it's a little bit different from Houston and Dallas and San Antonio as far as drivers go. Now drivers drive fast here. And, and, and I'm saying this, so this is scary because I'm a fast driver myself. But one of the things that I love here is that drivers here, like they're good fruit bearing drivers, I guess, if you will. They like if you give a signal, they'll, they'll slow down to let you in. They'll, they'll, they, they're considerate drivers, if you will. You don't see that in a whole lot of other cities. And you know what's funny? When I drive in other cities where people like this, what, you trying to get in front of me and delay me by one tenth of a second? I'd rather die than this happens and like, you know, they floor it. And, and I noticed that within the same day, I'm that, I guess, impressionable is that hanging around drivers like this, now I go like, well, I'm gonna stop driving this way, otherwise I'm not gonna get anywhere. They bore fat fruit. And I was the soil who bore the tree and bore more similar fruit. And then now I'm not letting other people drive in. But when I drive here, you watch this and you notice that people are letting you in. You're like, oh, that's so nice, thank you. And like you wave to them, when it's your turn, you're gonna to want to do the same thing. So bearing good fruit spreads good fruit and like it makes other people also want to spread good fruit. And sooner or later, you will be the recipient of the results of these good fruit, not just the giver. You will get to eat from what you have sown. You will get to reap what you have sown here on earth and also in eternity. If we focus on increasing our leaves, 
and on growing in godly wisdom. And we bear good fruit, which carry good seeds. We can, this, we can make this world a, a beautiful field full of good fruit. May God grant us to grow in godly wisdom so that we may be occupied with bearing good fruit every day of our life. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.